Hey everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about ways that you can reduce your waste while traveling. I'm going to start this off by saying that I do understand how wasteful and unsustainable flying is, but for me, for the most part right now, I just can't help it. As you can see here from this little clip, you can't even really see where I live on a map because the island is so small. We are about 800 kilometers south of the southernmost point of mainland of Japan. We're in the middle of the ocean. Unless we want to travel on this little tiny speck that we live on, we have to fly. Now we do, whenever we get to our destination, try not to fly as much as possible. I'd love to one day be able to not fly. If I lived in Europe or the US, it would be much easier to just drive or take a train, even if I live on mainland Japan. You can check out this video right here about the public transportation system in Japan and why it is so important to take public transportation. But the public transportation here on Okinawa is very poor. And another thing for me is that I simply don't wanna give up flying right now. I'm just extremely lucky to get to live in Japan for three years and wanting to see Japan and as much of Asia as I can while I'm over here and it's cheaper and less emissions than flying from the US. US, I really want to take advantage of that. I guess that kind of puts it into perspective. For me, it would just be a lot less emissions than if I waited to move back to the US and then fly to Asia. I'm not just going to sit over here for three years without visiting my family. It does pain me that I have to travel that far. I don't even want to say it. It's 14,000 miles. Wrong trip. I hope you appreciate my honesty and that I do try to eliminate my emissions as much as possible, but for now, it's just not feasible and practical for me to give up flying. A little disclaimer, sorry for all the noise. You can probably hear my animals out there, as well as the construction. I will insert a clip. They're literally tearing up our entire neighborhood. And one more thing before we jump into this list, I think traveling is very, very valuable. So you can read my full blog post. I'll leave it linked down below about why I continue to fly. The beauty of what the earth has to offer is what inspired me to go zero waste, low waste in the first place. While I understand that flying is one of the worst things that we can do. I try to do it as minimally as possible. So I'm here to encourage you to fly as little as possible, but I can't be one to tell you to give up flying because I still fly myself. Life is meant for experiences and meeting people and trying new things and seeing new things. And I don't want the idea of being flight free to hold you back from living your life to the fullest and seeing everything that this world has to offer. But I still want to encourage you to fly as little as possible, take advantage of trains and buses. And then we'll dive into this entire list and to show you different ways that you can travel to reduce your waste, other ways than just quitting flying. That's the idea behind this video, to inspire you to keep traveling, but do it in a more sustainable manner so that we can continue to preserve our earth, even through little steps. So the first category we're going to talk about is reducing your waste while flying. And the first tip I have for you is to pack light. If you missed one of my recent videos, you can check that out right here. In that video, I talk about how to pack light and why you should pack light and why that is important for your environmental footprint. Planes require more fuel when the planes are heavier, or rather they burn more fuel when they're heavier. So the less you pack, the less fuel that the plane burns. It looks really minuscule when you're just doing it yourself but the way that I like to look at it is imagine if all 500 passengers reduce the weight of their bags by 10 pounds 500 passengers times 10 pounds 5,000 pounds if each person was conscious about what they're packing and didn't overpack just because the plane allowed them to, just one plane can be 5,000 pounds lighter. I will insert the calculated amount right here about how much fuel that will save, but this just goes to show you that one small change does make a big impact in the long run, as you probably hear my catchphrase at the end of all of my videos. So it's important for you to realize these tips, but it's also really important for you to share these tips because all of these changes really do add up. So do what you can to pack light. Of course, be sure to check out that video I mentioned. I'll leave it linked down below as well to give you some tips on how to pack lightly. Tip number two is to bring your own food. This way you can accommodate your diet and you don't have to worry about just only being able to eat like a banana or something. And of course, this is a great way to reduce your waste. Not only is all of the food in the convenience stores and the airports very wasteful and even the restaurants, but even the food they provide you on the plane almost always comes packaged in plastic. I don't know if I have a photo of it, but one of our flights when we were on our way to or from Thailand, I forget, their food came in reusable containers and it made me so happy. But that doesn't always happen. Actually, that's almost never the case. So this especially goes for long haul flights. If you're getting fed meals on the plane, it is very, very wasteful. Almost all of it comes entirely in plastic. So you can actually bring food through TSA as long as it is not liquid. The next tip is to bring your reusables. And this doesn't just go for your water bottle. I also bring stuff like a reusable bag. I have one that folds up. I also bring my own utensils, earbuds. If you didn't know, some airlines literally pass out disposable earbuds and like eye masks and that just blows my mind. So make sure you bring all of that for yourself. And also so a coffee cup, extra containers for to-go food, extra jars. Don't pack your entire kitchen, but pack what you think you'll need. Bringing your reusables is a great way to reduce single-use plastic, not only while you're flying, but on your entire trip. And this leads me to the next tip, which is to refuse single-use plastic on board. I've seen little tiny cups with just a little bit of water in them. I've seen plastic utensils. Just refuse single-use items when possible. Another tip is to not print your boarding pass. This is really simple. You usually get an email confirmation. There's even airlines that have an app, and you can just download the boarding pass straight 
straight from there. It is also a lot less stressful because when you have a paper boarding pass, you risk losing it, it getting wet and ruined. Especially if you are a frequent flyer, imagine how many boarding passes you can save. The next tip is to use reusable luggage tags. Even if it is plastic, because I'm not really sure of any that aren't plastic free, at least it's not tag after tag after tag after tag. It's only one that should last you for a while. I'll try to do some research and find some sustainably made luggage tags and I'll be sure to leave them down below if I find any. Another tip is to use Google Translate when traveling abroad. And this is not only great for explaining dietary restrictions and stuff, but also great for refusing single use plastic. I also have a blog post about this and I'll be sure to leave that link down below as well. But it is key phrases to know when traveling to Japan. This includes stuff like no bag please, no straw please, and other things like that to help you reduce your waste while traveling in Japan. And of course, when I traveled to Thailand, I did remember a few key phrases, but not quite everything. And Google Translate worked really, really well. I have had very little issues with Google Translate. It is one of the best translation apps I have seen and used. And I really trust it and recommend that you use it too when traveling abroad, especially when it comes to reducing your waste. The last tip I have for flying is to donate to carbon offset programs. Now this, of course, isn't the best option, but it is an option nonetheless. For me, it at least helps me feel a little less guilty about flying, knowing that someone out there is going to plant trees with my money, and then those trees are going to help suck some of that carbon dioxide out of the air. I'll link the website I use down below. It's one of the smaller brands, and it is really cool. They actually show you where your trees are planted, so it kind of actually feel like you're being a part of something instead of just giving someone your money and then them being like taken care of. I actually know that this company has planted trees in my name. I'm not trying to say that this is a solution, but it is a little band-aid that we can slap over as we continue to fly. So now we're going to move on to tips for road trips. The first tip is to carpool when possible. If your whole family is headed somewhere, don't take five cars, try to take one or two if possible. The point is, is that fewer cars on the road equals fewer emissions and the less gas that has to be burned. Another idea is to choose fuel efficient cars. And I don't mean sell the car you have and go out and buy a fuel efficient one. What I mean is when you get to your destination, after you say you fly there, and you have to rent a car, try to choose one that is fuel efficient. And now of course the best option would be a hybrid or some sort of other battery powered car, but that's not always an option. So try to pick a smaller compact car over like an SUV or a truck if possible. Another road trip tip is to set your cruise control while you're on the highway. When possible, when you're at a consistent speed, when you're not in any of these weird conditions, be sure to set cruise control. Keeping your car at a consistent speed helps keep the gas mileage up and burn less gas. So not only is this great for the environment, but it does help you save money as well. So there are not very many tips for road trips, but I do have a lot of other tips. So we will go ahead and jump right into all the other tips that I have for helping you reduce your waste while traveling. The first one in this category is to eat before you go. This is just really simple because it helps you avoid eating at restaurants or eating on the plane. A lot of these things are very wasteful and you can prevent that by eating at home before you go. Now, of course, I have been caught in a pickle where I have been traveling like during lunch or dinner time and that's really inconvenient. So what I do during those times is I just eat a little bit before I go and then I pack something to eat for lunch on the flight. Some added bonus is it'll also help you save some money and help you from going hungry mid-commute. And like I already mentioned, food in an airport, in a bus station, in a subway station is gonna be very wasteful and probably packaged in a lot of plastic. So it is best for you to just eat what you can at home before you go. And again, like I already mentioned with the flight, be sure to bring your own meals with you. I only mentioned it before in the flight category because I wanted to touch on the TSA bit because not very many people know that you can take food through TSA, but this is important with all aspects of traveling. This just saves money on your trip. It helps you avoid extra stops. And of course it helps you avoid a lot of of waste because a lot of food while you're traveling can be packaged in plastic and very wasteful. And your only limitation when flying is your food can't be a liquid, so something like soup. But when you're driving or taking a train or a bus, you really have any option that you want. The next tip is to take public transportation when possible. Like I already said, I made an entire video about this. I'll be sure to link that down below. So whenever you get to your destination, whether you're taking a road trip or flying, be sure when you get there to take public transportation when possible. Things like buses and trains are just a great way to get a lot of people onto one vehicle and get more cars off the road. Not not to mention a lot of trains actually run off of electricity which saves even more emissions. And of course public transportation isn't available or even great in a lot of areas. I know this can be the case especially in the US. There are a lot of places that have great public transportation systems so be sure to take advantage of those when you can. Going along with that be sure to get transportation passes. And what I mean is instead of getting a little ticket stub wherever you go get a card or an annual pass. This way you can avoid getting countless little ticket stubs and use this pass throughout your trip. Getting one of these passes can be a great way to reduce your waste. Not to mention this allows you to 
to freely use public transportation whenever you want. I know the one in Japan lets you use it on trains, taxis, buses, and even in some convenience stores. It just allows you to have a lot more freedom when you're traveling. So now we're getting into some accommodation type tips and the first one I have is to put up the do not disturb sign at your hotel. So most hotels wash the bed sheets and towels and other stuff once a day or once every two days. And if you're staying there for an extended period of time, that can get really wasteful. So this way that the hotel can reduce their electricity and water consumption. It allows you to not have to put your stuff up every single day and reduces your risk of people messing with your stuff. Another tip along with this is to stay at smaller accommodations. Whether this just be smaller hotels instead of chains or even Airbnbs, this is because these places tend to not do wasteful practices like hotels do, like serve a lot of things packaged in plastic and wash bed sheets every single day. These places also tend to not use the little tiny shampoos that are probably just disposed of at the end of your stay. They also require less water and electricity to run. And of course, this is just a benefit to the direct economy instead of supporting big wasteful hotel chains. Going along with that, be sure to bring your own toiletries. The little tiny things that they have at most hotels are just so wasteful for many reasons. One, I highly doubt they keep those in the room for the next guest, whether they're brand new and unopened or not, just because that can be considered unsanitary. Two, they only really get you about one or two uses. So if you're like washing your hair every single night for a week, you're gonna need to get like four or five, six of them. Bring your own toiletries to reduce the single use ones that the hotels give you. Still on the theme of toiletries, the next tip is to just refill your toiletries at home. Instead of just using your little baby tubes of toothpaste and other stuff like that and then throwing it out and getting a new one, just refill it. So the toothpaste one is a bad example. That one's really tricky to do, but it is possible. And I've been doing it for like years now. I've had this same tube of toothpaste for almost three years. I just keep refilling it. And Dan and I both use it. So we only have one travel size toothpaste. This can go with all of your toiletries, toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, mouthwash, body wash. I don't know. What other toiletries are there? I guess like the only one that you couldn't really refill is deodorant. So especially if you are a frequent traveler, this is a great way to reduce a lot of waste. Another tip is to just take your recycling home with you so that way you can recycle it properly. Most hotels don't have a recycling option. They just have a trash can in your room. Some Airbnbs might recycle. Airplanes probably don't recycle. Worst comes to worst, if you have a plastic bottle or a can, throw it in your bag if you have the room and take it home so that way it can be properly recycled. I mean, that kind of goes with all the tips. Do what you can and don't stress out about it. Another tip I have is to bring digital entertainment or other entertainment that you already have. So try to avoid those kiosks in an airport. Try to avoid the entertainment section of a gas station when you're on your road trip. Magazines, books, and stuff like that that are probably not that great and are probably just gonna get thrown away. An easier that you can pack entertainment that is very compact is to do it digitally. Things like an e-reader, you can even get eBooks on your phone, podcasts, Netflix, you can download YouTube videos. All that stuff makes it really easy to have entertainment while you travel. But if you still like paper books, just bring one that you already have. So this way you're not buying cheap entertainment from the airport or a gas station that you're probably just gonna throw away anyway. As long as it's actually downloaded and not just saved or something like that, you can still access them while on airplane mode. When you're traveling, be sure to dine in instead of take out. I think this especially goes for road trips because typically when you're on a road trip, you just swing through the drive-thru and eat in the car. But if you can, take the 10 or 15 minutes that it might take to actually eat in. If it's fast food, it's gonna be wasteful either way. So try to pick a still pretty fast restaurant so you can get on your way, but something that will offer an actual plate and silverware instead of something that's disposable. And not only while you're on a road trip, but while you're traveling throughout the city that you're going to, be sure to pick somewhere that's actually a dine-in place. And especially try to find an establishment that offers you reusables instead of disposables. Going along with the theme of eating, be sure to eat locally when possible. Try to avoid chains and fast food while you're traveling. It's just so much more meaningful and actually gets you diving into that culture of that city when you actually get to try their cuisine instead of a big chain. And again, fast food places typically use disposables, but local places typically use reusables. Another tip I have is to avoid souvenir stores. Even if you don't think that you're going to impulse buy anything, it's just best to avoid these whenever possible. It might be fun to look, but then something might catch your eye and then you're drawn in and you're buying something that's wasteful and cheaply made, nobody wants that. So especially if you don't have self-control and you love to buy stuff, you should definitely avoid souvenir shops to avoid buying cheap and probably disposable items. So our souvenirs are usually just ticket stubs and receipts and stuff to remind us of the experiences that we had on our trips, but we do actually buy some souvenirs sometimes. For example, our Mount Fuji hiking sticks, and we usually buy a magnet wherever we go, though we do try to buy locally made, handmade magnets whenever possible. That's not always the case, doesn't always happen. So I'm not saying to avoid 
avoid them completely. If you have something you collect and will actually cherish for a long time, feel free to get whatever you want. The main theme is to avoid souvenir shops if you're just gonna buy stuff because it's cute and it's gonna be used for five minutes. That's an exaggeration. Things like magnets, postcards can be good souvenirs, especially if you wanna get a gift for someone. So I guess you don't have to avoid souvenir stores entirely, but try to avoid the junk that they offer. And instead of going to souvenir shops, the next tip I have is to opt for experiences rather than buying things. It really kind of blows my mind that people literally travel to shop. There's just so much more to a city or a country than just the items that they're trying to sell to you. Try to get involved in the culture, go to a show, go to a museum. Even if you just want to spend more money on the food, I think that in itself is worth it. I love getting to see the culture and like old historical buildings, things that that city was built off of or what that country was built off of. I could literally list so many things that you could do instead of just buying things. Something iconic about that city or about that country. Like in Japan, they offer tea ceremonies and mochi making and just stuff that's really special and unique to that culture. And I just love doing that stuff and getting immersed with the locals and getting to see kind of what their life is actually like and not just what the tourism is like. Of course, these things produce little to no waste and you can take photos during these to capture those moments and that can be a souvenir for you. And these photos and memories will last a lifetime a lot longer than a shirt or a mug might. The next tip is to pack clothes that can be reworn. And I talk about this in my packing light video and obviously I'm not just gonna wear this shirt one time and toss it out. But what I mean is pack clothes that will go with multiple outfits. I had this and two more plain colored shirts. I had denim jeans and black jeans and they're all very neutral. So just those five garments alone, I could have a potential of six outfit combinations. So I wouldn't have to pack six entire outfits but I could still have six outfits if that makes sense. Especially if you're like going to a cooler climate, you don't necessarily have to wash your clothes before you rewear them, but you can always wash your clothes in the shower or a lot of hotels and Airbnbs offer you a washer and dryer for you to wash your clothes so that way you can get more use out of them on your trip. Another tip I have, and I kind of mentioned this in the air travel section, is to just bring your own containers. And this doesn't necessarily mean just a water bottle and a coffee mug, even things like mason jars, Tupperware, things like that, things that you can pack food in and then once it's done, you can use it to get takeout at a restaurant, for example. You can use a mason jar as your coffee cup and then that way you can also use it for things like water or if you go to a bulk store. Do you go to bulk stores when you go on vacation? I would. There are many more sustainable travel tips and tricks out there but these are just ones that I have come up with and that I practice myself. Please be sure to leave some of your ideas down below for the rest of us. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you some inspiration to reduce your waste while traveling even if it is just a little bit at a time. Your small steps really do have a big impact in the long run especially when multiplied. Sure it's not all gonna happen overnight but the more you talk about it, the more you educate people, the more you like spread awareness about the climate crisis, the more that people are actually going to care and implement changes into their lives as well. I just kind of wanted this video to be proof that you don't have to quit flying to still travel sustainably. Even though air travel is definitely not sustainable, I'm not saying I agree with it, but there are other ways to reduce your waste while traveling than just giving up flying. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to comment your ideas down below. And of course, if you like this type of content, travel, minimalism, veganism, sustainability, all that stuff, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell for post notifications so you don't miss the rest of my videos. We are going to be going back up north over President's Day weekend and we're going to be staying in our first hostel. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of a review about our first stay in a hostel and going to be talking about why staying in a hostel is so sustainable over staying in a hotel or something of that nature. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, remember that these small changes you make have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. Usually I can see a timestamp. Has this been recording? Actually, let's stop it right there. I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. Do they all call it TSA? What's TSA stand for? Probably save some money because Air Force food. Air Force food. What? If it's for the good of the earth, then carpool. Another idea, whoa, why, why? Public transportation systems? That was really fast. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, offer to buy. I knew I couldn't do it.